Hey guys, welcome back to Grave Reviews. My name is Chris, and today I've checked out the new slasher movie, Stream, which is directed by Michael Levy. My friend is an AD on this movie. She was also an AD on The Terrifier 3, and I think 2. And this movie is put together by the same production company, Fuzz on the Lens, so Damien Leone, who is the director and writer of Terrifier series, uh, did the practical gore effects in this film, which do show, and it's probably one of the best aspects of the film. Stream is about this family who is going on vacation. They stay at this hotel, and as it turns out, not is all as it seems. There may or may not be four sadistic killers running around, streaming their kills for an audience, and some hijinks ensue. This movie features a ton of cameos from 80s uh, horror movie icons. You got Barbara Crampton, you got Felissa Rose, you got Tony Todd, and Jeffrey Combs serving a larger role than the rest. This movie, on paper, not exactly super interesting to me. The concept seems very derivative. This this has been done so many times before. You know, you're going back just to like The Running Man, the 90s Mortal Challenge movie, which had that killer theme song. You got Rob Zombie's 31. You got Squid Game at this point, Hunger Games, all this kind of stuff of, you know, a battle royale type situation. The look of the movie wasn't that interesting to me either because it has this really digital look to me. It looks like, you know, super high res and it doesn't really harken back to the 80s throwback style. I feel like that the movie is going for with its music and its lighting and stuff. I never understand why uh, directors make this choice of wanting to make an 80s throwback thing, but they give it a modern, sleek look. It doesn't really jive for me, and I think the digital sharpness of everything and the high quality nature of it doesn't give you the soft uh, focus or blurred kind of lines that film does and the gritty nature that I'd want for something that's super gory. So to me, it doesn't help sell the practical effects that well. But the aesthetics here are subjective. I'm being nitpicky. I like a certain kind of aesthetic that this movie just didn't quite have for me. Doesn't really hurt the film though. I think a lot of people won't care. For me, what hurts the film the most is that it's like two hours long and it is a derivative idea filled with a bunch of cameos that feel more like um, fan service rather than actually servicing the, 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 the story and the actual heart of the film. I get it from a filmmaking business perspective. It is smart and we can dive into some of that in a bit. But back to the film itself, I think that for a movie that is such a simple story, they spend so much time. There's not, it's like an hour until the characters realize the situation that they're in. And it's frustrating from a viewer perspective because we know it immediately. So we're waiting an hour for the characters to catch up with us and it becomes a grind. The first hour is spent dealing with characters who are so one dimensional, so vapid that it just seems like a waste of time. And I think if you would have cut about 45 minutes out of this movie, I would have enjoyed it quite a bit more because there are four different serial killers in this thing and there are tons of interesting kill sequences and then that's where the movie shines the most is when they're murdering people with these fun practical effects nothing ever reaches the terrifier level of gore or even that creativity in the kills but there was still some fun there is a tic-tac-toe kill sequence which i think was the most interesting and unique thing in the film you have david howard thornton who plays art the clown uh in the terrifier films showing up playing a killer in this and this really showed me his range as really not being much. He plays a, almost exactly the same characterization of art and his movements and stuff, but wearing a cheaper looking look and mask. Before I mentioned about a smart business decision to have all these 80s uh, cameos. And yes, there was a time where you'd see Eric Roberts in every low budget movie ever, and, it, and Felissa Rose and stuff like that in the last 10, 15 years, maybe even more. It's because when you're making a no or low budget movie, if you have a named actor attached to it, it's much easier to find distribution and potentially an audience, or at least that's what distributors think. I think it now at this point, those actors who have been featured in so many no budget and low budget movies like Eric Roberts and Felissa Rose and a few others, I feel like they have lost their cachet in so far as actually being someone who actually does bring an audience. I think this movie with Jeffrey Cohn playing such a large part and the whole uh, entourage of these B-movie stars, yes, I think it does help and it does bring an audience. But this movie does everything 
that is smart from a marketing perspective because one, you're playing off the terrifier name in your marketing. Two, you have all these B-movie stars. Three, it's filled with a bunch of creative kill sequences which are great to market. It's got a masked killer. All these things are smart to bring an audience looking for some sort of fun popcorn slasher movie, which there's a, a huge audience for in the horror genre. Uh, outside of the kills, you really have not much working for me here. There's a lot of creativity in coming up with horror and kill sequences. Um, something that I really couldn't do. I couldn't make a movie like this just because I love them. I love slashers and I love creative kills. I just don't really have that uh, muscle built up or that uh, instinct built up on how to fashion a creative kill sequence. So that is something I do really appreciate about these kind of slasher movies. The story though is completely lacking and really disappointing for me. There's also other moments that stuck out as kind of weird. There's moments with the daughter going on dates and stuff like that or going out with a guy and it feels like they're playing like stock music from like Love is Blind or some sort of Netflix reality show where it feels like a modern day pop song but like a bizarro cheap version of it and it just feels really hacky and cheap at times. So the movie is very competently made and shot and has a style that I just wasn't quite in love with, and it does have some fun kill sequences, but it is a slog to get through at times. And like I'm saying, if they would have cut a considerable amount of this movie, it would have been much more of a breezy, popcorn, entertaining watch. By the end, I was satisfied with some stuff that happened in the kill sequences, and I did have a decent time with it. So that's Stream. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything I should be watching. Leave a like and a comment because that helps out the channel. And I'll catch you here next time, guys. Goodbye.